And another story making news, New York City agreed to pay $17 million to settle three wrongful criminal convictions. The case involves three brothers who served a combined six decades behind bars. One of them, in fact, died in prison before they were exonerated last May. This is just the latest in a series of wrongful convictions involving former NYPD homicide detective Louis Scarcella. Charles F. Coleman Jr. is a civil rights attorney and former Brooklyn, New York prosecutor, and he's here to talk about this case and this investigation into Louis Garcella. It's good to see you, Charles. How you are too, you? Debbie. How are you? Okay, so first of all, we've laid the groundwork. There were these three brothers. They were accused of committing a murder, and that conviction was vacated last May. And now there's the uh, city comptroller has awarded these brothers $17 million. Right. How unusual is that, first of all? Well, we've seen over the course of Scott Stringer, our New York City comptroller, being in office now sort of a pattern where when it comes to these wrongful conviction cases, he is deciding proactively to settle them before they go to trial. And one of the reasons for that is that he doesn't want to get to trial and have this case get in front of a jury and run the risk of a jury awarding more money than he could have settled the case for in advance and ultimately saved the city some, some cash. Okay, I understand that, but tell me what your impression is of this particular amount. It's a total of $17 million. I believe it was the New York Times reported uh, that uh, Mr. Jeanette receives six million dollars. Uh, Mr. Hill received seven point one five million dollars. The estate of Mr. Austin, who died in prison, uh, will receive three point eight five million dollars. OK, all of this adds up to seven to 17. This seems like a very large uh, settlement. Sure. It may seem that way when you look at the numbers, but at the end of the day, how do you put a valuation on someone's life? How do you put a dollar amount on, on 27 years in prison? Exactly. Of, of when they may have not have been innocent, you know, when they may have been innocent and may not have been, should have been there in the first place. I think that's something that, you know, people have to understand that these are people who were wrongfully convicted by shoddy uh, police work done by Louis Scarcella. Louis Scarcella. And speaking of which, uh, as I also understand it, Louis Garcella used a, um, a woman by the name of Teresa Gomez, who is a known uh, crack addict, as a witness right. uh, in these uh, that contributed to their conviction. Also used this same witness in six other cases. How many cases would you speculate have been tainted by these alleged questionable practices? You know, th these cases emanate from a time in New York City's history when, you know, the crack epidemic was hitting and everyone sort of was trying to keep up with the amount of crime that was going on. So a lot of this may have slipped through the cracks at the time, but most people never witness a homicide ever in their lives, regardless of how close they may be, may be connected to the criminal element. Uh, but this witness somehow miraculously was able to witness six different homicides. Of course, that flies in the face of reason once you sort of begin to do a little digging. And then when you look at her testimony, she was contradicting the physical evidence that the judge, uh, that the prosecution put in front of the jury. She was contradicting other witnesses. So this was a clear case of a witness who really, really lacked credibility being constantly put on the stand and offered. At one point, uh, this witness was referred to by Scarcella as his go-to witness mm -hmm. on homicides. Yeah, that's just absolutely incredible. Now, in this case, these men's convictions were vacated. Is that the same thing as declaring them innocent or it exonerated? Is, it is not. Uh, it is it, they're vacated because they simply can't rely on the evidence which was put in front of the jury to maintain that conviction. At the end of the day, this is less a commentary on guilt and innocence, and as much as it is a commentary on the fact that you can't violate people's constitutional rights to fair and just due process. Is there something to be made of the fact that it's the comptroller's office that's doing this, uh, negotiating these settlements in these cases, as opposed to, I believe, is it the law department with, this, with the city? So that, you know, in a lot of ways, particularly in these instances, that's actually more of a political question than anything else. You know, mm. people have rumored that Scott Stringer has other, op uh, other uh, aspirations, and so him taking the lead on this and deciding that his office can take this and, and, and it's under the purview of his office to make these decisions can in some ways be leveraged as a statement later on down the line should he want to pursue other political office. But it is within his authority as the city comptroller to make those decisions so he hasn't done anything that's out of line. Yeah, and I think the law department did say that it is within his authority to do this. Does this create, though, some sort of resentment at all? I think, you know, sometimes people get a little territorial about uh -huh. folks stepping on their toes and the amounts that he 
settling these cases for may be uh, at issue with respect to the law department. But ultimately, because he has the authority to do so, that argument isn't going very far. Give me your thoughts on the, a claim by the family of Eric Garner, uh, Garner's a $75 million lawsuit against the city. There. That says a lot because Scott Stringer is looking to uh, settle that case as well. And what it says, in my opinion, is that they're very concerned, that being the city of New York, is very concerned about the court of public opinion. They don't want this case to get in front of a jury. They don't want that to come out because then it seems about dollar signs and you're, again, victimizing the entire Garner estate. And so they want to get this thing done quickly and quietly to have a settlement and just do away with it. Yeah. Do you think that's how it will come down or do you think that this family will want their day in court? I think ultimately, uh, if the dollar sign is, is, is right, mm -hmm. the family may end up settling. I mean, you know, there's always, a, there's always a possibility that when you go to trial that you could lose. I think that most people's sort of common sensibility suggests that you've seen the videotape and so you know that that level of force was not appropriate and did not require that to subdue Eric Garner. Nevertheless, when you go to trial, there's always a chance. So I think that the family may be inclined to settle. Uh, it's hard to say at this point, uh, but it's something to watch. Yeah, it is something to watch indeed. Charles Coleman. It's always a great pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Thank you, sir. And you're watching Arise America.